Unlike most dramas, this plot shows you the silent killer at work in broad daylight. It strikes swiftly in the guise of a hidden illness. A sudden dizzy spell. An erratic car weaving dangerously down the highway. A frantic effort to bring the car to the side of the road. And the insidious menace is now in full command. How many people are involved and who is at fault is not important now. Help is needed fast. Tell the officer about the hidden illness. But a futile gesture for help and an unconscious form inside the car are the only visible entries of record that could be made here. If he could only speak of his hidden illness. He could have just as easily as putting on a bracelet. And here our mystery ends. Because once that flashing piece of metal is put there, it sets in motion a series of events that solves the crime of the silent killer. The information on that bracelet speaks for itself. It says this man has a medical problem. It names it and a phone number for further information. And before the scene of the accident is clear, the victim is in an ambulance on his way to the nearest hospital with the assurance that by the time he reaches there, a collect call would have been placed to the number indicated on the bracelet. The medic alert switchboard operator would immediately identify the patient and give a detailed medical history to the attending physician. This life-saving emblem has not always been among us. How did it begin? Let's go back to 1953, to the town of Turlock, California. On a shady street of this friendly community is the home of Dr. Marion C. Collins. And it was here that the Medic Alert story really begins. Dr. Collins had the average family, a wonderful wife and four happy, healthy children. But sometimes fate strikes in curious ways. And it was at this time that their daughter Linda was to change the course of events for the entire family. Mrs. Collins recalls that fateful day when our daughter Linda was 14 years old, she was playing in the backyard with a gun. She was quite an outdoor girl and liked to target shoot. She hurt her finger on the trigger. A seemingly uneventful accident that almost cost Linda her life. As she sighted down the gun barrel, the only thing she could see in the future was the target. But once the pendulum begins to swing, the die has already been cast. This is more serious than a scratch. It will take more than a bandage to stem the flow of blood. Too late, Linda remembers no one is in the house. Still, no cause for great alarm. But what next? Because we weren't home, she hurried down to the clinic or the hospital because she realized that something had to be done about the finger. The ironic part of what is about to happen is that even had Dr. Collins been home, he would have had to follow the exact same line of treatment and medication. After the surgeon had uh, sutured the finger, he asked the nurse to give her a skin test for sensitivity to tetanus antitoxin, which is a usual medication given in case of a wound. An almost immediate reaction to the skin test rendered Linda Collins unconscious. Had she been given the full amount of tetanus antitoxin, 
It is doubtful that she would be alive today. As it was, she remained in an oxygen tent for more than a week before the crisis was passed. It was now apparent to Dr. Collins that Linda's future would have to be guarded against this silent killer that had sent its warning in such a dramatic way. What would this mean to Linda? Would she be a shut-in from now on? She was a great outdoor girl at this time, the age of 14. And of course, was always eager to be out playing. It was her fun to go on bus trips at high school to see the football games. And each time that she would go on these trips, her father and I would be fearful that there would be an accident and that she would have to be taken to a hospital and be treated by a strange physician who did not know of her allergy to tetanus antitoxin. So we pinned papers inside her coat and around her wrist telling of this allergy. When it was time for Linda to go to college and she had chosen Stanford University, we began to realize that we were not going to be around to pin papers around her wrist and that something more permanent had to be done to protect her from her allergy. Dr. Collins thought of tattooing both her arms, but of course she wasn't in favor of that. And so we had a family conference and Dr. Collins finally came up with the idea of a bracelet that should have some type of medical insignia on it that would draw the attention of nurses and physicians to the bracelet. On the reverse of the bracelet, we engraved her allergy, allergic to tetanus antitoxin. In this way, we felt that we had a permanent protection for Linda. We began to realize then that there were many other fearful people in the United States who were looking for some way to identify hidden medical problems. We had several bracelets made for our friends, and then we began to get letters from other cities saying, we've heard of the Medic Alert bracelet. Can we get one for someone in our family? Linda, by this time, was in college as a student nurse. And the doctors there and the nurses seeing her identification began to ask about them for patients. Linda, all during these years, had pursued her hobby of golf. She was always an outdoor girl. And so we felt, too, that we were protecting her as she went to the national golf tournaments. And there, other golfers became interested. And the people seeing her bracelet and newspaper people were asking her about it. And in this way, Medical Alert began to be publicized throughout the United States. And to Dr. Collins, whose first objective was to protect the future well-being of his daughter Linda, there began to appear the nucleus of an idea. An idea that this small medical reminder was in actuality a universal symbol of health for all people with medical problems. And it was such people who besieged Dr. Collins by mail for this protective emblem for themselves or someone in their family. Letters from people with problems. Allergic to penicillin, diabetics, epilepsy, neck breathing, taking morphine derivatives, allergic to tetanus antitoxin, people with multiple sclerosis, rare blood types, wearing contact lenses, or taking cortisol. Shut-ins wrote for this protective device so that when they ventured outdoors, they could feel secure in the knowledge that Medic Alert would speak for them if they couldn't. The man on the freeway would feel more secure with the added insurance of the little safety device on his wrist. People who traveled to strange cities wrote for the bracelet for the added comfort it would afford. By word of mouth, the tiny lifesaver was becoming known at all levels, from businessmen to truck drivers. People from all walks of life found the Medical Alert bracelet 
to be just what they needed. And gratifying testimonials to the little lifesaver began to appear in major papers and publications, adding the needed impetus to Dr. Collins's idea to expand the growing business into a non-profit organization. Because the one bracelet for Linda Collins that had grown to a living room operation for the whole family finally had to be expanded to this present location in downtown Turlock, where a staff of competent employees now keep pace with the ever-increasing organization. With an advertising campaign in full swing, the Medic Alert Foundation bustles with activity, turning the bracelets and necklaces out in a precise and expeditious manner, as fast as the applications arrive. This is the heart of Medic Alert, and it is to this center that all the vital information and medical histories are sent. Here they are checked, condensed, indexed, and filed in duplicate. The bracelet itself, with a Medic Alert symbol on one side, will eventually have engraved the needed information on the other. A wallet card is sent with the bracelet containing more detailed information that can be engraved on the small, eye-catching metal disc. But even so, the bracelet remains the beacon of security against the hidden illness. Here, the exact name of the illness or problem and the precise treatment and dosage are entered, so that when the bracelet moves to the next department, all vital data has been checked and rechecked. The engraver then proceeds to inscribe the steel plate which is the final step before packing and shipping. Here, the engraver sets up the master stencil for insulin. One of the most common users of this medical identification bracelet are diabetics, whose illness sometimes, unfortunately, resembles intoxication. We use the word unfortunate because there have been several instances where people in a diabetic coma have actually reached the local drunk tank before their illness had been discovered. Another good instance where Medic Alert could save time and perhaps a life. So what Linda went through with her injured finger, and later what Dr. Collins developed to protect her from future harm, was in essence a safeguard from all unfortunate situations, where in lieu of the spoken word, people are protected by the written word on their wrist. From this room go these shiny medical assistants, people wearing contact lenses who are afraid of them being overlooked if they were involved in an accident and couldn't communicate the problem to arthritics and rheumatics taking cortisone, cardiovascular patients taking daily medication. And Dr. Collins still receives mail indicating new uses for the medical tag. Over 145,000 persons are now wearing Medic Alert bracelets. To attain this measure of success, Many service organizations or clubs were enlisted to further inform the general public as to the significance and availability of the bracelets and necklaces. Many organizations endorsed this Medic Alert emblem. To name just a few, the American Academy of General Practice, National Sheriffs, International Chiefs of Police, and of course the local police departments were familiarized with Medic Alert, and once given the facts were aware that hidden illness can sometimes fool even the well-trained eye. Things are not always what they appear to be, and the suspected drunk may turn out to be a sick person desperately in need of help. And it must be a gratifying experience for anyone, private citizen or official, to go to the aid of someone, regardless of their suspected condition, and find the signal of distress, the Medic Alert bracelet, to pinpoint the problem and react immediately for quick and correct medical assistance. Good afternoon, Medic Alert Foundation. Yes, doctor, what is the number, please? All right, and where are you calling from? San Francisco. Thank you. Would you hold the line, please? The number just given the operator sends her directly to the complete medical history that was compiled when the application was first received and recorded in Turlock at the Medic Alert Foundation. 
A duplicate is then sent to the files at Switchboard headquarters. Hello, Doctor. The number 114125 that you requested is listed in the name of um, Joe Irvin, 300 San Miguel, Arcata, California. The patient is a diabetic. The dosage is as follows, taking 17 units NPH insulin, and the party is also a Protestant. Thank you, doctor, very much. So from the small bracelet with a large capacity for dispensing vital information, who can judge the amount of service rendered? Did it save someone's life? Did it save him the embarrassment of being thrown in jail? Or did it just get him on his feet and assisted to the nearest medical aid? Whatever the amount of help, large or small, you can rest assured that the person with a medic alert bracelet will be forever grateful. This fingertip service is just as close as your telephone, 24 hours a day, every day, collect from anywhere in the world. So remember, if you have a hidden medical problem, or if an accident should strike and you couldn't talk, this bracelet speaks for you. The airlines have found the medical alert system helpful in the past, and many now included in their training, the assistance given by the bracelet. Recognition and prompt action on the part of the stewardess will save precious time in treating the patient. And the all important information is called ahead to the nearest airport, where the proper steps are taken and all necessary medical assistance will be at the airport by the time they land. Again, Medic Alert and Time played an important role in solving a hidden medical problem. But as in most cases, old problems are counteracted and new ones arise. So it is with Medic Alert. Dr. Collins and the staff are constantly researching the problem. And as this information is compiled, it flows in an ever-increasing stream from the presses at the Medical Alert Foundation in Turlock. This material, in the form of kits, pamphlets, displays, and other printed matter, is sent to medical societies and associations, professional and voluntary health agencies, law enforcement and fire departments, civic organizations, life insurance underwriters associations, clubs, and other national and international organizations, too many to be mentioned by name. Now the recognition of this life-saving medical symbol has gone beyond the borders of the United States. Since 1960, sister organizations have been established in Canada, New Zealand, Spain, the Netherlands, the Philippines, Great Britain, Ireland, South Africa, and Rhodesia. Also, the Medic Alert emblem is registered in many other foreign countries, and autonomous branches will be established there shortly. Dr. Collins and the Medic Alert Foundation International are conducting a continuous educational program to professional people in order to make the significance and availability of the Medic Alert emblem, as well as the services of the Foundation, known the world over. When this symbol of protection reaches all the corners of the Earth, then, and only then, can the full impact of Medic Alert be known. Although cases and testimonials for the bracelet number in the thousands, there are still people with hidden medical problems that would benefit immeasurably from the feeling of security that comes to them when the stainless steel Medic Alert bracelet encircles their wrist. These benefits should be known so that all people in need of it will realize that their medical problem does not have to be kept a dark secret. They can get outside, feeling secure with their Medic Alert bracelet.
They can drive the highways and the freeways with the comfortable knowledge that should they be unable to speak, the life-saving bracelet will speak for them. Your children should be able to play freely with your knowledge and theirs that should a situation arise, their medical problem will not be overlooked. And regardless of time of day or location, the unexpected may occur. At home, at the marketplace, no matter where, people in all occupations and all walks of life will go about their duties with renewed confidence and a better outlook for the future. This is the medical alert story, but it doesn't have an ending, and it won't have until people the world over are free from all medical problems. And this is not in the foreseeable future, nor as long as Dr. Marion C. Collins knows there is someone somewhere who needs the protection of medical earth.